Now, we can settle for the details and we'll focus on this very disturbing issue that is creating so much issues in our public hospitals. The minority in Parliament say government has shown itself to be totally insensitive to the health needs of the people with its poor attitude to addressing concerns of laboratory professionals who are currently on strike. The industrial action is to drum home their demand for a review of their conditions of service. Patients have been forced to resort to expensive private laboratories. Minority spokesperson on health committee, Kwabana Minta Kando, says government must stop the insensitivity and negotiate with the workers to get them back to work. Activity and the responsibility of this government has become legendary. And so I think that when it comes to matters of health, the government must move with alacrity because it borders on the lives of the people. I am not going into the merits and the demerits of why they are going on strike at the moment. But any reasonable government, any reasonable government will engage them and then plead with them whilst they are even at the negotiation table to go back to their hospitals or their facilities. And so as a matter of urgency, I believe that government must respond to the accord and make sure that these health workers are back to the hospital because already we have a lot of challenges at the health facilities. They are leaving, in fact, they are fleeing from this country because of the economic conditions we find ourselves in. Now, when they take their salaries, they cannot buy anything with it. And so in a matter of between 2021 to 2023, we have lost not less than 69,000 health workers in this country. And so today, if you go to the facilities, if you go to the hospitals, you wait, you wait for hours because there's hopelessness in the system, because there's so much hardship in the system. And that is what government must be responding to. And so for me, the, the, the Constitution guarantees every citizen the right to health care. And so they must respond to the needs of the uh, lab people. I'll shortly take you around the country to understand how this is impacting on people who are in desperate need of health care. will be at the Lake Mar Hospital where authorities have devised ways to ensure that the laboratory is kept running. But what is the latest? Because we understand that the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, the, Labor, the National Labor Commission, acting on behalf of government, they've summoned the professionals, that's the laboratory professionals, to a meeting in a bit to find a solution to the issues at stake. What is the latest on it? I can bring in um, Franklin uh, Niyama, who is the first vice chair of the union. Franklin, you're welcome to the polls. Uh, is the meeting underway or is over? Tell me what is happening. We understand that this meeting should have taken place at, at midday, 12. It's, it's, it's past 3 p.m. now, and you haven't even started. That, 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 is, not, that is not accurate. None of our meetings in the National Labor Commission have been called at 4 p.m., and it's normally after 1. And it depends on the number of cases that they have on hand to discharge. And so that, that information is in a great. And we are just waiting for our attorney to appear. Uh, so does it suggest that you're not actually given an exact time to appear? So normally you are given time, and normally they will give time like 1.30 p.m. But it depends on the case. You know, issues of uh, agitations and, you know, conflict resolutions can, can drag sometimes. And so they may, of course, calculate their time, but sometimes they, they get their predictions wrong. Now, you are going into a meeting with a body that's also where you describe your strike as insensitive, unjustified, uh, and this is the way that's supposed to negotiate on behalf of government. Clearly, they've taken a position. 
how 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 are you hoping that you get the fairness that is the view of the situation we also have a view of the and the view of the law would also be just suppose in all these situations. The people call the sanctuary caregiver. Mm. And the 1772 hours stand on our head that when we have issues, sin must come to the fore and dealt with within 72 hours. The duty bearers failed to act and did not treat us as a sanctuary caregiver. And they go on the tangent of common things, ours is unnecessary, untenable, and it's also unfortunate. Right? That is why we are here. And we need to look at the issues dispassionately and put a ruling where it is just. We, we, we have been around the country, from the Greater Accra region to other parts of the country, trying to understand how this is impacting on healthcare delivery. Now, what we've been told by some managers of some of these public health institutions is that among the things that they are considering is to try and get uh, laboratory professionals working in the private setup to work in places that you, you used to work and now you are on strike so that they can attend to uh, patients in need of health care. Uh, I mean, my brother, may I respectfully submit to you that the private sector also employed in the and they need to stay in business. And so normally when you go across the various hospitals, you will see private hospitals across the various roads. Now, managers are picking and choosing based on which contract to engage you to come and work in the field. They would have to explain to the audience what their interest is. That is the conversation. Because what? When you go to the various hospitals, they are in business. Fairness must be there. Mm. You let a client, when the service is not available in the hospital, cross the road and have sent the service out the road. Why are you picking one to come in? They don't contact the road, which hour? What is your interest? Monday should have a conversation. We know what they do. Are these uh, laboratory technicians in the private sector? They, they are supposed to be belonging to association, isn't it? Well, so we belong to the same association, but you reckon that Melco is both the friends and the government sector and also the child institution. Yesterday when we so spoke... these conditions of service does not directly affect them. Right. But we really can say that as we sold that on, maybe they will come on board in solidarity. All right. Uh, yesterday when we spoke, you indicated that in previous meetings, I mean, the, the finance ministry, for example, uh, uh, was represented by people who had no authority to commit the government into a pact. Is it your expectation that today's meeting you have everybody who is in a position of trust so that this discussion can move on faster and, 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 and resolution achieve as early as possible? Well, in the lobby, I have cited some of the directors who were too busy to come to those weekends of our negotiation. Today, we have showed up. And I'm grateful that they are here with us. Okay. And, uh, okay, so uh, Franklin, Emma, we'll have to leave it here and hope that after the meeting, there, there, there may be something positive going forward on this matter. I agree, so. So let's have conversations after this and this. All right, thank you so much. Uh, Franklin, Emma is the first vice chair of the Medical mm -hmm. Laboratory Professionals Union, and they've been on strike since Monday, demanding the, uh, the improvement in their working conditions. According to them, their they, they, they are, they are, they are working conditions, uh, set of working conditions that, been, that, that they have been uh, used to expire some time back. In the last two years, they've been trying to get government to agree to a new set of proposal. Government was not forthcoming, pushing them to declare an indefinite strike, and today, as we speak this afternoon, the Fair Wages and Salaries Commission, the National Labor Commission, they've summoned them to a meeting. And as you heard him say, the, some reps from the Ministry of Finance are also at this meeting. When they are done, we will, we will go back and then bring you the, the latest on this matter, whether they will call up the strike or they will continue with it. But how is this impacting on those who are in need of quality health care? Now, patients visiting Lekma Hospital in the Greater Accra region are forced to pay three times the normal fee for a lab test as a strike by the laboratory scientists enters it for there. The patients say 
they are directed to private laboratory facilities for lab tests when they visit the hospital main lab unit. But the constraints on the, on the private laboratories due to the ongoing strike means patients here have to wait longer than usual before their test results are released to them. Kenneth Jesse was at the Lekma Hospital and he interacted with hospital staff and those who had come there to seek medical care. Yeah, we also have some of them seated here. Some of them are waiting for their test results. Others are also now trooping in to come and get tested. Now they've raised a lot of concerns. One of them is how fast they get their results. Ordinarily, they would have gotten it the very day they did the test, but now they would have to wait for 24 hours or more to get their results. But, um, you are coming to do that, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. When you got here, what were you told? Uh, I was here at three days today. Uh, they said I should come and do lab. But since yesterday, nobody is here. There's people here, but they, but they say that uh, they're in strike. So they are not, I am not able to get my results. So I came to the And the boy is still there. It's an emergency. Yesterday, yeah, I know that the lab is very expensive. It's not normal no, money they take. I pay everything, but still the result is not ready. Uh, if I remember, I pay more than 100 CD. But normally, I think it's 40 or 50. Right? And you still haven't gotten the results? Exactly. I, I, yesterday, I have to get my result. Okay. Because my boy is a, a asthma patient. So I always run here. So results, sometimes I come in the night, but I get it. Okay. Um, yesterday, I was feeling headache and chest pain. And blood was coming through my nose. Yes. So I came yesterday. They said it, it could be the holy heart. I'm a holy heart patient. So I came yesterday. They said I should come and do the lab today. The uh, two lab. The other one was medical ward. And the other one, this one was the x-ray. The other one was the lab. Yes. So I came to do the lab. They said they are on strike. And the amount they gave me was one one twenty cities, yes, to do to the uh, to do uh, at the private uh, laboratory, yes. So that's it. This, uh, today is my first time here. Yeah, yesterday was my first time here. So this is the card they gave me because I didn't even know we would go to private uh, laboratory. They just took us there, so I didn't know. And when we were going there, they told us they are on strike. Yeah, that's why. No, not yet. I'm still waiting. Uh, I want the one cash and share, but me do OPD or no one cash or one who had a demonstration to private lab for no one. What do you do? And I may expect this, and then so scan and then lab ram bay and then cabay bay hundred and something say three thirty. Three thirty. Three Ghana cities. More than your budget. I budget it for. Emergency, and that be me emergency. Many me who doctor. And to know, I say, Oh, my, my test is being see you. To not me expect it, sir. The head of administration at the Lekma Hospital, Charles Banafo, tells me that this strike is having constraints on their revenue generation because the laboratory gives them quite a huge amount of money, but due to its closure, they are losing revenue from there, and also are sympathizing with the patients who have had to go back because they cannot afford the services of the private facilities. Yeah, it's actually a, a problem. As you are aware, uh, the hospital setup is made up of team of professionals and in a team if the defenders are not there it's not a team if the goalkeeper is not there it's not a team if the strikers are not there it's not a team so one group out of the whole makes it difficult as you are aware the head the lab they are the ones who helps in investigations yeah so once they are not there and the department is not functioning it has double effect one getting access to investigation to be able to take clinical decisions and two also their generation also affect the revenue of the institution. Yeah, so it's something that is a setback that.
has to be sorted as soon as possible. Mm. I mean, from, from the side of the hospital, is it affecting you in any way? Yes, it does. Serious effect because when there is an impression, they have to do investigations, and most of the investigations come from the lab. Yeah, so once they are not there, it's a huge setback, and uh, we can't compromise on it. It has to be sorted as soon as possible. All aware is something that every employee deserves. Yeah, so whatever they have put on the table, I know government have officials in their position, and then they also have the executives, and then fair wages commission is also there. So they look at it holistically, whatever is appropriate and is fair, in, in line with the name of the fair wages and salary commission's name. They should be, look, be able to look at it and come out with something that is reflective. Mm -hmm. Most of the time there are two positions, but when they move middle way, there will be a solution. Mm -hmm. That uh, there should be a makeable solution. The executives must meet government middle way, government must meet them at middle way so that we come back. Because we are not complete without them. Mm -hmm. So is the hospital losing money? Losing Definitely, money? because it's one of the major IGF generation points and a shutdown for a week is a major setback to our finances and it is no good news from a management perspective. Well, the striking laboratory scientists are demanding better working conditions from the employer, which is government. Until then, they have vowed not to return to duty. From the Lekema Hospital in the Greater Accra region, Kenneth Jesse for Joy News. So why is the situation in other parts of the country? I can take you live to the Northern Regional Capital, Tamale, where Martina Bugi is joining me from the Tamale Teaching Hospital. Martina, is the situation different from what we are witnessing here in Accra? Not at all. When you get to the laboratory section of the hospital, they have this notice written that they are on strike because of that most people who came in have left. But you have this empty space. But one person who could not leave was somebody who had come to donate blood for their wife who is pregnant and on admission. He's been told that he has to bring the blood for them to uh, put it on the wife. Now he's there hoping that at least somebody will have sympathy on him mm. and then help him. He says that um, he cannot go to any other private hospital because it will be too expensive for him. And the smaller hospitals that probably can attend to him they wouldn't have these facilities to screen the blood and then the transfusion that. So he was hoping that somebody would come to his aid. Now, one other thing he also raised concern was that um, somebody had come earlier, whose child was an admission and was anemic and also needed the blood transfusion. And there wasn't anyone. So he, I mean, what one thing he said was that the hospital cannot function without the blood mm. bank in operation, and they need a laboratory scientist to do that. So he's hoping that government will come, the government will listen to them, and then they'll go back to work. So what are the options available to these stranded, you know, uh, persons that require urgent medical care? Now, the northern region is not that uh, fortunate like Accra, where you have several other laboratories that you can go in and have some of these tests done. We have limited uh, laboratories, and so it means that some people would have to wait until these people return back to work. Then they can have their test done, and that is if you leave to uh, witness that. So that's the challenge with the northern region. We don't have too many laboratories well equipped to be able to do most of the lab tests that the Tamale Teaching Hospital would normally do. So the management of the hospital, what, 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 what are they saying? Are they so helpless that they are doing nothing about it? Um, the management didn't speak. Um, the PRO said those responsible were not available. All right, Martina, thank you so much for this update from the Tamale Teaching Hospital. Now, let me take you to Parliament because early on today, the minority side held a news conference addressed by the ranking member on the Health, on the health Committee, Kwabana Minka Akando, where they described what is happening as clear case of governors showing so much you know, sensitivity to the matters at hand. Uh, parliamentary correspondent Kwaku Asante joins me via Zoom. So Kwaku, welcome. So beyond, you know, addressing the media on what is happening now, what more did they say they intend to do uh, to bring finality or to get government to attach some seriousness to the strike? Well, I'll say we expected that this issue might have come to the floor 
because the indication I was getting from the ranking member Kabila Minta Kando was that they expected to raise this issue on the floor and get at least the Speaker of Parliament to make a referral to the Health Committee or for them to be able to start some engagement with the workers together with the Ministry of Health and the other institutions that are involved in this controversy to be able to, to have it addressed because they say that they are really concerned that patients now have to pay an arm and hand to try and get laboratory tests done at these private facilities. But as you may know, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, because of the trial of the minority leader, the NDC MPs have decided they will never come to the floor whilst their leader is in court. And mm. so until their leader leaves the court and comes back to parliament, they will not come. So in fact, business is going on on the floor now as from the monitor that we have in the press office here in parliament. And not a single NDC MP is on the floor of parliament, including Kwabina Minto Akanda himself, who we expected will raise this issue on the floor for some for some referral to be made to the health committee of the house to be able to, to deal with this. And that is because of their leader being in court. We know that that trial is still ongoing there. The, the, the minority leader and, and, and that trial of Japa. Japa mm. is currently in the box is being cross-examined by the state right. after those allegations that he had made. And so this issue has not come up on the floor because the NDCMPs have not turned up to the chamber. They are just around the coffee shop and other places are joining the chamber, but have not come to the floor. Uh, but they, they, they also spoke about the, the held up containers at the Thermal Port and they've given indication what they want to do going forward. Well, yes, Kobla Minta Kando says his side would demonstrate at the end of the month if government does not live up to the promise to clear the goods by the end of the month. We know that they gave government a one week ultimatum only last week. The health minister came and gave some explanation and some assurances that he expects that by the end of this month of June, those shipping containers containing medicines that have been given by the Global Fund to the country free of charge will be cleared. The minority say they've had the minister's assurances. They expect that these goods will be cleared by the end of the month, failing which they are going to hit the streets. Right, we can listen to Kwabana Mika Kando on this matter. We address you on the locked up commodities and medications at the port. And as you know, we the members of parliament from the minority side will not relent on our effort to push government to clear this lock up commodities and drugs until they are cleared from the port. And that must be put on record. And as we speak now, today, not all the containers containing drugs and commodities at the port have been cleared. We are a group of reasonable people and so we have heard the plea by the minister responsible for health that we should give him two weeks. Although it doesn't make any sense to plead for two weeks to clear commodities that have been at the port for one good year. But that notwithstanding, we have heard him. But we are sending a clear signal and warning that within his own two weeks, all, and the emphasis is all, all the containers containing these drugs should be cleared from the port. Not some, as they have been doing, that they will go and clear a few containers and they will go to sleep. We will not countenance that. Failure to do so will be left with no option than to hit the streets. So that's the, the latest position of the minority on the held up containers containing some, you know, drugs gifted to Ghana by the Global Fund. Uh, so in the absence of the minority, what business is the House considering? The House is currently considering a number of bills, in particularly this bill that is coming from the Works and Housing Ministry. The minister himself, Francis Asensobo, I think, is on the floor leading the House to consider this. And in fact, per my count, at the time I left the chamber about five minutes ago, there were 16 NDP MPs. That is far below the courage number that allows Parliament to work. But often, as you may know, the way Parliament works, mm. if no one is on the floor to raise an issue of quorum for it to go on the record, for the Speaker to direct that the bells be rung and all that, that really won't count. Mm. And so the House is currently proceeding in dealing with this bill. There are a number of questions, most of which are standing in the name of the NDC MPs, but they've not gone to, to, to those issues yet. The House is dealing with this bill that is coming in from the Western Housing Ministry first, before they can go on, and then the Rules Ministry, in fact, as you say, 
and having to do with the root fund and all that. And so that is the situation now in Parliament. The House is progressing to deal with these bills and other business, despite the minority MPs. I've spoken with a number of minority MPs, mm. including James Kuchar, who are fighting back the things that they are trying to sabotage government business. They see that they are standing by their colleague. They believe the court should be able to release him, given that he's the minority leader in the House, to be able to come to the floor and work and do his responsibilities. In fact, um, one MP, NDC MP for Kintampo telling me that the court can actually set a trial for mandates when Parliament is not expected to sit. Mm. And so that is the hard stance the NDC MPs have taken. And since last week, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the House is really not doing much, sitting very late, because the NDC MPs simply will not come to the floor to work. My final question would be, I mean, this is a majority side that wants to do business. In fact, they have a lot of business that they want to do. In time past, they've complained about the attitude of the minority side in dealing with government business on the floor. Now, if you consider the number 137 plus an independent cutting 138, that put them in a position to do whatever they want to do in the absence of the minority. Yet, even they themselves are not available to do what government expects of them. Well, exactly, Elton. In fact, whenever both sides are on the floor, the minority are actually in the majority. And in fact, the number of NDC MPs have seen at a coffee shop and around the, the, the precincts of parliament far, far more than the NDP MPs. And if they were to come to the floor now, there will be more than the NDP MPs. And that's a big question that we've been trying to put to the majority in the particular. You have the majority. Whenever um, the push comes to show when you want to use your numbers to get things through, you are able to do so. And the approval of the ministerial nominees at the emergency sitting, they're able to do so. So why are you not able to bring your numbers to the floor to do both? To do business? For instance, there is this crucial issue of tax waivers that the majority themselves are spoken about in terms right. of how it is impacting the economy. Mm. They have not attended to it at all since Parliament resumed. And why would I have thought? I mean, in terms of strategy, if your colleagues, the guys who are opposing this are not coming to the floor, this is the time that you get your numbers 138, which is enough quorum to take any decision of a sort in the House, except mm. to remove the Speaker of Parliament, of course, to be able to do this. But they themselves are not turning up in quite a number, because, in fact, if you look at the floor now, there are only 16 NPP MPs. That is far below the current number even needed to start proceedings right. and, and the current number needed to, to do a number of votes. So those are questions that we've been struggling to get answers from in terms of majority leadership. What the strategy is to be able to get their numbers on the floor to separate government business through, even if the NDC colleagues decide that it's not happening. Well, thank you very much. And of course, the reason why the minority NDC MPs are not on the floor is because they are solidarizing with their leader, Dr. Kessel, at a force and who is in court because the ambulance trial is ongoing and of course the, the state prosecutors they are cross-examining uh which is the third accused in, in this matter we'll have we'll bring you the very latest when the cross-examination is done we'll speak to our correspondent who is in court we'll also take you live to the KNU as where uh, an election uh, to elect uh, the vice chancellor is underway the Tewu Ghana is raising issues with what they describe as an attempt to bring in TU, TUC. They went to court. I mean, they said they're going to scuttle the, the program. We'll take you to the KNUS2 campus for the very latest on that. But let's come back home. And this is also a very important matter. If you get sick right now and you require medical services at, in any public hospital, you won't get it because the members are on strike. However, with unexplained kidney failure and other health conditions surging in Ghana, it is crucial to watch what uh, you eat and where you take that particular meal. Data from the Food and Drugs Authority based on World Health Organization's projection reveals that unsafe food causes over 200 diseases leading to loss of over 33 million healthy lives every single year. There is more in this report. What you eat could be killing you silently. The latest Food and Drug Authority FDA data indicates that consuming unsafe food results in the loss of 33 million healthy life years annually. In a speech read on her behalf at an event to mark World Food Safety Day, Chief Executive Officer of FDA, Dr. Delise Mimidaku, revealed that over 200 diseases are linked to unsafe food each year. Her deputy, Roderick Danieje, spoke on her behalf. WHO estimated that 33 million years of healthy lives are lost 
due to eating unsafe food globally each year. And this number is likely an underestimation. Over 200 diseases are caused by eating food contaminated with bacteria, viruses, parasites, and chemical substances such as heavy metals. This growing public health problem causes considerable socio-economic impact through strains of healthcare systems, lost productivity, and harming tourism and trade. He further cautioned the public to avoid buying food from unlicensed vendors as the FDA intensifies efforts to improve food quality and safety. For you also making a choice to buy from a vendor who is selling next to the gutter, that horrible gutter, that thing that we keep saying that the best watch is sold by the gutter. If you didn't, pro if you didn't um, purchase it, they will not have service and therefore they will move away. One of the things that we are doing currently, for example, is we are pushing the issue of progressive licensing scheme. On the food, food vendor side too, we are working with the local government. It is a scheme that is already underway where we have officers every day, countrywide, going around. Number one, they are giving education, they are sensitizing the street food vendors. We are telling them that, you need, number one, you need to have a health certificate. And this is where it also concerns the whole of Ghanaians. You must also ask them, do they have the health certificate, number one? Number two, when you also go, when you also go there, check and see whether they've got what we call the street food vendor permit. The street food vendor permit is something that they are supposed to stick. It has got a QR code on it. Don't patronize food from those who don't have it. It means that we don't know where their food is coming from. And then some of them too, they take forever in trying to um, come up. They think that there will be the tolerance. So now we are driving people off the market to ensure that the right thing is done. That is why I say food safety is everybody's business. Don't patronize it if it has not got the street food vendor permit, as well as the, you also ask them where is their health certificate. If they cannot produce that to you, that person is there selling illegally. Some food vendors at the event, however, believe the FDA should focus on intensifying its monitoring to improve the country's food safety rather than just issuing certificates. Um, it, it doesn't mean that it cannot be done. It is more than visible to do. But do they even have the manpower or the resources to make sure that every cocoa seller or every wache um, cooker or seller, they have the people to um, certify them, if I should put it that way. If they have those resources, then voila, we won't even have to look out for. You already know where to. I don't think it ensures any form of safety at all because they, unless they, they do their regular checks, we are still at high risk because sometimes when you go and you see how they even handle the food, the cough, the way they handle themselves, it's very unhygienic. So until FDA steps in, me as an individual, the most I can do is report the person or report them to uh, emergency food safety, yada, yada, and so forth. This year's World Food Safety Day themed Food Safety Prepare for the Unexpected also highlighted the devastating impact of unsafe food on children. For Joy News, Carlos Caloni, Accra. So the, the, the thing about eating food that is unwholesome is that you are buying disease into your body and you might have to spend more money to treat it. Now, I've heard so many things, including the fact that this week I saw on social media somebody claiming that some people use actually use formalin that used to preserve dead bodies in the preparation of tilapia. How far this is true, I don't know. But joining us in the studio is Roderick Daddy, a J, Deputy Chief Executive Officer of the Food and Grass Authority. You're welcome, sir. Thank you. All right. So, I mean, the statistics that we brought earlier suggest that over 33 million people die every year across the world from food-related diseases. I don't know if you have, if you can narrow it down to Ghana, if you have statistics that suggest that, uh, I mean, let, let, let's own it in terms of Ghana. Is there statistics that, that look at how many people may have suffered death as a result of eating unwholesome food? Yes, um, we have some statistics, but you cannot say it is whole, mm -hmm. um, in the sense that there are different reports. 
Um, one of the things that we are doing right now is to get the uh, hospitals mm. to do the necessary reports that they have to do. Mm. And um, it's all something got to do with education. But from what we've been able to gather over time, mm. um, it's something of concern. Right. And it's sad that there is a lot that goes without it being captured properly. Mm. And so you are not able to tell exactly um, how much it is. But mm. whatever it is, you notice that it's something that is um, not conducive for the country. Absolutely. And we need to do that. I think recently you may have heard of some issues concerned. Even recently, um, there's an investigation that mm. we are undertaking right now in the central region mm -hmm. um, about a school, some children went to buy yes. some food. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we are, we, together with Minister of Health, uh, the disease uh, control, going over there to look at what is happening. And so it's harming us one way or the other, just that we have to look for a, a proper way of capturing the data to know the full effect. Mm -hmm. Yes. What we have is the worldwide, mm -hmm. which many, um, uh, should I say, developing countries uh, you know, put together and right. use as um, an indice. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, also joining us uh, via Zoom this afternoon, is food safety advocate Louise Akwete. Uh, Louise, uh, good afternoon and welcome. Uh, if you can, uh, you need to unmute for me, Louise, so we can hear you. Yes. Uh, all right, so Louise will have to uh, fix the audio so we can hear you. Uh, uh, so we'll, 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 we'll get a rectify on them, but still the studio. Uh, Louis, good afternoon, if, if you can hear me. Good afternoon, General. Right, of course. So you're also welcome to the discussion. We are looking at food safety and the other matters. I just uh, asked uh, the, 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 the deputy CEO of the Food and Drugs Center, who is here in the studio, his, his preliminary comments. I don't know what your preliminary comments will be uh, in terms of the food we consume in Ghana, the food we buy from outside, uh, how safe they are. Let me pick your initial thoughts on this. Thank you. But, uh, I would say the 99.9% of the food we eat in Ghana is not safe. 99.9%? Yes, 99.9%. That, like, well, that is like 100%. So 99.9% .9 means that every food we are buying from outside is not safe. Yes, yes. It's not safe. Simply because every, every corner you go in this country, Every food that's being prepared in Ghana, there's a MSG in food, mm. which is not safe for our health. And, and Louis, this is based on what? Based on what I have experienced on the field. So this is your own analysis? Yes. All right, I'll come Every, back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes, please go on. Uh, yes, go on, please. Yes, every woman cook with MSG in Ghana. Yes. And then also, uh, uh, the kind of food that they cook, every woman wants to add an additive to the food, for, which is a food enhancement. And then with that, we have so many sickness. Earlier on, I heard someone saying something like you're having a heart problem or numbness or something like that. Yeah. Like my hospital, one of the hospitals. It's real. It's happening live. Are you? And the Ghana with. Yes, uh, 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 Louis, are you able to tell us what some of the some of the things that they put in the food that are not good for human consumption? Exactly, exactly. Uh, MSG is one, and a salt pita is one. What is MSG? Uh, MSG monosodium glutamate. Mm -hmm. and, and every monosodium glutamate. Mm -hmm. Yes, please go on. The, the side effect on a human body gives headache, flashing sweating and the face pressure or tightening tightening mm. and then and then also quick sometimes you find it so difficult to breathe and maybe sometimes you'll feel a heartbeat serious one especially when you take the ice cake that you put in the bottle the bottle mm. you find it so difficult when the food is about to ferment when it's a fermentation stage you find it so difficult to breathe and then also, in addition to that, too, like kinky, the normal kinky that they cook, they put MS, uh, uh, salt pita on it to soften the kinky. 
So when if you are not lucky enough, you buy that and can you eat, you are putting yourself into trouble, which is a, which is very very difficult. All right, Louis, I'll, I'll, okay. I'll let you hold on there, and we'll, I'll come back to ask you about where where you you put the blame. Is it regulatory failure, or people are, have just taken advantage of the fact that there is little monitoring on what they do? That's that's how come uh, there is so much, if you like, in terms of your statistics. But let me put that question to Mr. Roderick. Yes. Is it possible that 99 percent of the food we consume outside, that is by the roadside, are unwholesome? Uh, it's, it's, it's a definite no. Mm -hmm. It's a definite no. And I would want to take this opportunity to also do some education mm -hmm. over here. Um, a lot of the things that um, Louise has spoken about, I think um, we may have to do a little bit of homework as it is. Mm -hmm. You know, food is food. Food has that basic, um, th that basic uh, function mm -hmm. of... Um, being something that you take in to get nutrients, mm. to help with proper growth, to keep you. It provides energy, it provides um, what you call it, proteins, and that will help you in growing. Mm. It will uh, provide um, uh, carbohydrates, gives you energy. Mm. It provides um, the, your, your oil, that's also for energy. And it, it goes all the way. Around. That's why we talk about a balanced diet. But one of the things that must also come to light that when you are talking about food, mm -hmm. food in itself, through handling practices, mm -hmm. you may inadvertently, intentionally or inadvertently uh, get certain things that shouldn't be there. There are three of them. We, we call the physical hazard, the chemical hazard, and biological hazard. Mm -hmm. We talk about physical hazard, we are talking about something like getting um, glass, you know, something that is structural in nature which can hurt you. Mm -hmm. So if you have a, a piece of a pin or metal in your food, mm -hmm. um, it would harm you, you know, if you take that, it. That, that you may not know. That you may not know. It may harm you. If you were to, for example, spray these people who do um, treatment mm -hmm. in terms of chemicals, pesticides, for example, if you put it there, you don't wait for the withdrawal period to happen, you bring it on the market, people take it. You can also harm. That's a chemical hazard. When 70% of the problem with terms of uh, food hazards, what we call food ha hazards, is the third one. That's what commonly people will say, germs. Mm -hmm. So there are different forms of germs that, you no, know, you don't wash your hands properly. I mean, you they touch, you go to the toilet, you don't wash your hands properly, you can introduce a date over there, um, sweat, you know, um, and so many forms. That's why we say food handlers should wash, the, I mean, should ba take a bath and all of that, put on neat clothing. In fact, we call it protective clothing. We say protective clothing because the clothing is actually a barrier between you, the human body, and, and, and the food product. Mm -hmm. So that's why when you are preparing food, we say cover your hair because you could have a piece of your hair Enter falling. The food. And, and so that's, these are preventive steps to take. So these three things, the physical, the chemical, and biological hazards are the ones that can harm you. So, in so, fact, there are places like the U.S., they have even gone on ahead. When you talk about the chemical, now they are even now talking about allergens. Allergens are captured also in ours, but they have separated it. And because of that, they've done what we call, um, uh, what we call uh, FISBA. It's mm. uh, another law that they have done. But they are all concepts that you can rope into us uh, and we also are using. So what he has said basically it uh, means that anybody who buys any food along the side of the street is in danger. It's in danger. But, I mean, you bear, you bear witness. At least now, and that is the issue that we raised at this year's food safety. Mm -hmm. Yesterday was when FDA, together with uh, partners like the WHO, the FAO, um, the um, WFP, mm -hmm. we had a meeting. Um, it was shared by Ministry of Health. And we were talking about food safety. It was a day that we had set aside. Mm. It was 7th June, right. but we celebrated it actually yesterday. And there, right now at La Palme, we have people from industry. We are training, taking them through some of these things to identify what hazards and things are. So, and as one of the things that we said was also the issue, our concern for our markets. Mm. Uh, you see the way people handle food. Um, we are saying that now almost everybody now in Ghana, almost everybody takes a meal outside the home. That very makes possible. street food very, very important. Mm -hmm. And so you need to watch what you eat. Mm -hmm. You need, and we say food safety is everybody's business. Mm -hmm. 
So we are throwing our, our hands, um, inviting the public, as we have always done, that they need to also look out for certain signs. The Food and Drugs Authority is there to protect you. Okay. We have what we call um, the, uh, the, the food safety policy mm -hmm. that now enjoins uh, the Food uh, and uh, Drugs uh, Authority. We'll come back to that, but a few yes. questions that I, I, I just want to highlight so that uh, we'll, we'll take the discussion one after the other. So you are dismissing, you are dismissing the 99.9% .9 that Louise just put out, that food sold outside are simply unwholesome. I am, it, I am educating. Mm -hmm. It's one of the things that we do. Mm -hmm. We educate, and you see, it's a scientific world. Information comes in. Uh, definitely, Louis will have to look at. Of course, I'll that. go back to him very soon. Louis is saying certain things, and some of the things that he's saying in terms of like the heart, the use of MSG. Mm -hmm. MSG is a product, monosodium glutamate. It's a product that is registered by the Food and Drugs Authority. If it was not safe, we would, would not, not have uh, approved. Yes. Approve but what use. we are saying, what we are saying is that you have it's a food additive, just mm -hmm. like salt is a food additive. So you have to watch how you use it. It is you who will decide how much salt you want to put in your food. Mm -hmm. Likewise, it is you who will decide how much oil you want to put on your food. When you go to the, the chop bar or you go to anywhere to eat, it is you who decides that, fine, I want so much oil on it or I want little. That is where we are now talking about issues that you also need to watch your nutrition. Mm -hmm. So the Food and Drugs Authority has got a research department and, uh, and also nutrition that handles um, these things. And we are saying that if there is something of concern, please inform us. We've got a, con uh, a consumer alert that you inform us and then we'll take a look at it. And we need the um, public to support us. And that is a call that yesterday. We did yesterday. We did. Let, let, let me get a quick reaction from Louis. So you heard the deputy CEO of the Food and Drugs Authority, uh, Mr. Uh, Daddy Ajay. What's your reaction to what he just put out? Yes, uh, it is good that he actually uh, actually accepted and then also identified a few things that I think we that that will, will help all of us move forward. Mm. Now, let me start from the where uh, from the farm from the farm where they have sourced the food stuff from. First of all, when it is raining here in Ghana, what I have realized is that when it is raining here in Ghana, people actually open their uh, soccer way like from the house. Mm. To with the rainwater, then the water, uh, the water probably run through the water to the last point. When the water will stand at one place, then those farmers they use that water for to water their cabbage and carrot and those things. And then I believe you will you will tell me for the fact that when that happens, it gives a, a typhoid and everything. And even with that, our market is not really properly built in a way that the food handling in the market alone is also a whole problem on each own. Each own. Mm. And then when that happens, trust me, it's, there's a likelihood that anybody who has come in contact with that particular food, let's say one cabbage, which is being contaminated from the farm, from the farm to the market, from the market to the house, to each and every household, there's likely that what everybody will be contaminated with, uh, titled with that. You understand? Right, I do. Oh. Right. So, so clearly, there the, 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 the are issues that we need to deal with. Now, let's come. I mean, some time back, you, 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 you told people who are into selling food by the roadside to, to, to publish or display their, their, their health certificate. So that if I'm buying from this person, I know that he's gone through the right process and whatever he's putting out there is awesome. Uh, that's exercise. These days, some of the places I go, I don't see those certificates. You are right. And in fact, that was also one of the calls that yesterday we brought up. Even as I'm talking to you right now, there is, uh, there's even the drive mm -hmm. between Food and Drugs Authority and local government mm -hmm. because we, well, we operate the uh, food safety policy and joined by other st uh, state institutions. And one of the things is that we want to get our hands dirty. Mm -hmm. We go down... We want to be able to teach. So the Food and Drugs Authority has got what we call the Industrial Support Service. Even as I'm speaking to you right now, mm -hmm. they are giving um, all of uh, what you call right now um, at La Palm Beach, uh, some, there's some work that is going That's on right going. now. Exactly. It's all part of the Food Safety uh, Week um, as we are, we are celebrating. So t tomorrow we are meeting and we are hoping that we can get the media even to be there. To do that. Because we want people to know that the Food and Drugs Authority has got a friendly face that wants to help 
uh, people to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the ignorance is really big. Because and the point that, that I mean, the, so, so the, the, Roderick, so, yes. so, somebody can tomorrow just speak to a landlord mm -hmm. and then he, uh, the person is giving space in front of the house. Yes. The next thing you see, the person has set up a small table and is selling gobe or anything. Yes. And then, I mean, and, 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 uh, so, so, what, so are you saying that anybody at all can just set up a no, food joint very and good. then start selling? And that is why the food safety policy uh, no, has, is trying now making things easy. If people want to go into business, we want to assist. Mm -hmm. The assisting here is that you should know where to go and have your health certificate done. So we expect that you go to the closest district, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Um, the health, uh, health, or, or, health. Yes, and yeah. go and do I even know somebody who yesterday went had the blood uh, taken, and then it, it was um, an instantaneous thing. It was determined, and the card was given to the person. The person pays for it. So it, it, you have now your health card. Then if you also now want to cook, the FDA has to see the place, and that is the certificate that we are talking yes. about. And we are hoping to get the buy-in of the public that when you also go and buy, there's a QR code on it. Mm -hmm. You are supposed to ask, if it's a kinky seller, if it is um, a gobe seller, no matter who it is, we want to make it easy for people to come in because it's good for business. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, too, it must be safe. You are the ones, the public, your consumers, myself, we are the ones who are supposed to ask, check, check. and be sure that exactly. this person so, has gone through the right you. process. That's why we say food safety is everybody's business. Mm -hmm. And we are hoping that we can also get um, um, the advocate to also part of this exercise. To, exactly so that people will know that they can get training from the fda can they can get it um, also uh, because it's countrywide mm -hmm. as it is you can get it and then we are working with sister uh, agencies local government too will not just allow you what what we saw for example i'll give i'll give an example mm -hmm. and people in carnation market should not take it on the wrong thing some of the things that are being done you you say ice kinky remember this is food you are mashing the kinky in this equipment, and it's terrible. Some of the things that we saw, if I had known earlier, I would have brought you yeah. this video for you to let the public see. And we think that, no, this is wrong, but we need to correct them. What is the source of water that they are using? Why are you doing you this? the kinky. Exactly. Why are you doing it in the open? Do you have your health certificate? Is, is the place um, um, uh, uh, conducive enough for that exercise? That is why, according to sec Section 130 and 131 of the Public Health Act, you are supposed to have a license to do that. And did they have? And, and they, 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 didn't they didn't have. have. Yes, and that is why we are saying that we are calling them. Please, if you don't know, let us bring you in. It is not every time you want to go in with a hard stick of you know, saying that you are going to correct. You also need to teach people. But, Awareness but, but, but is ignorance of the law is no excuse. Yes, uh, th not. Those who are, who are flouting the law, yes. is there any punishment under, the, uh, under this regime? Oh, yes. We've, we've, I mean, there, there are various levels that the chief executive can give you. At times, we may want to call in because if you look at the scale of it, the ignorance may be big. Mm -hmm. This is the World, uh, the World Food Safety Day. Mm -hmm. We want to throw out a hand. We want people to know that we can assist, and we would rather want to do it that way. We want people to work with us. It is not always the best that you go with the road. But when we have to come and we come, have to come down and hard, I think you have heard us on air. Of course. When we've, been, we've, we've done what is necessary to bring people uh, uh, to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. So in trying to correct somebody, mm -hmm. it comes in different forms. That is all that we are okay. saying. Let, let, let me bring in uh, Luis now. So Luis, you, you've been out and about. Uh, Europe, America, Africa. I mean, the Ghanaian uh, uh, experience, and in terms of how the laws are enforced in some of the countries that you've been, if you're consuming something, that will give me a negative reaction, and then for me to spend so much money to treat myself, sometimes I may not be able to treat it, sometimes I may die in the process. It's something that we should take it very seriously. The, the Ghanaian situation, is it deteriorating? Improving, you heard the, the, the FDA deputy CEO about what they are doing to make sure people act right. What, how would you describe the Ghanaian situation as compared to the other countries that you've been? Uh, uh, Ghanaian situation, to be honest, uh, the system, they might, the leaders must be centralized. They have to get a, a centralized process, way that this thing can be managed and it can be managed well. It can be done. Mm. 
and it can be done in a way that everybody will be safe in a country. And, and I can I can an instance where a, a house close to my place, a house they are producing pure water there, such a water, and you see every year this thing only a a a a cold and then a Ghana standard cold mm -hmm. only. But when you call, even when you call. I think connection issues there with, with Louis. We'll try and reestablish connection with him so he can address some of these issues. Uh, yes. yes. And uh, I would want to, uh, yeah, I mean, um, I, 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 I think he's back. He's if, if we can just allow him to, All right, okay. to, to conclude on that point. Uh, Louis, uh, yeah, please go on. Yes. A place where they are producing pure water, uh, such a uh, I think the connection is again not stable. Yes. Yeah. So, so, okay, okay. And so, then I realize. I think we'll have to disconnect and connect again to see if we can get a better connection to Louis so that he can make his point very clear. Louis, can you hear me? Oh. Yes, yeah, so, so. Yeah, I can hear you now. Okay. Yes, please go on. All right, so that, those are challenges we'll have to deal with every day. Yes, so, so yes, with, with what Luis is saying, if anybody sees anything that is happening out there and you have cause mm -hmm. to believe that the wrong thing is being done, we are actually, the FDA is actually depending on the public to provide information. To provide information. Let us know. Because you are not everywhere. We are not everywhere. You don't everywhere. have the personnel to exactly. monitor every single job. And then, so that was why, that is the reason why we're saying that we are collaborating with our sister institutions. Mm -hmm. Because you will see that environmental health, for example, they go all the way to the district. FDA may be regional. And they work hand in hand. So these are some of the things that we are talking about. That remember, we all serve the same uh, country. Mm -hmm. So why can't we put our hands to, together and be able to do it? And that's why we're also depending on Louise and others. If you see something that is not, is not right, let us know. Mm -hmm. Then, the, for example, the sachet water, as he's talking about, mm -hmm. just read, look at it. When you look at it, you see the product registration number. You can go easily to our website to check whether that product is registered or not. Mm -hmm. And even if it is registered, it's not like a guarantee for the ways somebody may be I handling it. Anything, I think if you look more. at the video that you showed beginning, mm -hmm. some of the people who were participants were thinking that oh, giving a license or giving a certificate um, is not enough. They are right. What we say is that it is rather partnering with them when we are partners, it means that we are not like one is above the other. Mm -hmm. We are saying, come, if you see, just like how you say security, if you see something strange, say something. say something. If you see something going on, tell the nearest FDA office. We have our Twitter numbers. We, ha we are on WhatsApp. Tell us. We take it seriously and we will follow up. But, 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 so so the, 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 the other matter, so this, the, the, this, uh, this, this program is not only targeting those who are selling by the roadside. No, no, it no, extends no. to restaurants because I remember that some time back a restaurant at Osu was closed down because the kitchen was found to be, I mean, uh, I mean, the, 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 the exactly. state of things was absolutely nothing to write home about. Exactly. So it's not just about those who it's are selling. No, 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 no. And if everybody you, who if, sells yes. food for commercial purposes. Getting over 50 people sick in, in, uh, going to the hospital, we followed up and we dealt with them. Mm -hmm. We made sure that before they reopened, they had they had gone through training. Mm -hmm. Uh, our chief executive made sure they got the training that they needed, uh, whatever punishment or something that was that they got it, and it was not easy for them. But I can tell you, the way they have improved over time, they themselves can bear witness. And from for whatever happened at that time, you know, in public administration, I am a public administration right. student. In public administration, wherever there is chaos, then comes reforms. Mm -hmm. So the reforms that we did was such that it was far-reaching for the whole country. And we are saying that if you are of a certain stature, mm -hmm. you know, um, a restaurant of a certain stature, then there's a certain structure we are expecting. Like you, you must have food safety officers on, on, on call 24 hours because some of them are working um, I mean, around the clock. Mm -hmm. you must, there, there's a certain structure you must have. There are certain things that they need to know. People, when they come in, they must have their uh, hand, uh, handless certificate. Uh, then they must also be cleaning on the job. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, some of these things, that happened back in the past. It was on Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. People were eagerly selling yeah. and then not looking out for the safety precautions that they were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. 
And that is what we want to let anybody out there right now know. If you're operating any place which is not licensed by the FDA, it, it is not known, and you are doing that, we are telling you you need to move quickly and do what that is happening. Is, because yeah. sometimes they are like mushrooms. They just come up. It, they don't have anything to do. They think that is where they want to go. But it, it's a regulated area, and we are depending on the public okay. to assist us here. I'll go to Louise, but when I come back, I mean, when I advertise that we're going to talk about food safety, I've got a lot of test messages. I'll share some with you. Okay. And some videos that some people sent to us about tilapia and formalin. I'll come to ask you whether this has come to your notice. But Louise, um, I'm glad now we'll have a stable connection to you. So you've heard the FDA. They are bent on ensuring food safety on our streets and in our restaurants. Does this satisfy your concerns? Yeah, yeah, and that's okay. But we, we need more education, public education on that. With the public education, that will help all of us to, attract, to actually scrutinize the, the whole system, sensitize the whole system so that at least everybody will be, will be safe in a system mm -hmm. in Ghana. At, at least everybody will be safe. Right. Uh, we'll come to wrap up with you on that. But Mr. Jay, I mean, a few issues. So I've got a video in, but this video. It's been on social media for some time, especially on Facebook. Some people claiming that some use formalin, which is used to preserve dead bodies in the preparation of tilapia, for example. I don't know whether this has come to your notice. There's also the issue of some trouble operators sometimes using flour in, in, in the soup they prepare so that they can get the quantity that they want and the thickness that they want. So you think that you are eating a very, you know, wholesome soup was but it, you don't know was what it, is was really it nice <laughs> oh, well, oh, so these are some of the things that have come up yes uh, let's start with the tilapia and the use of formalin has this come to your notice yes uh, thank you very much i mean the issue of formalin being used to preserve fish is over three years ago that we ourselves know countrywide picked samples mm -hmm. and checked to see the veracity of it uh, we did come across one a case like that. Mm -hmm. So it was not like a widespread this thing. Yes. And that is the thing with the food industry. People here, people may use certain um, practices. That's why we have good manufacturing practices and bad manufacturing practices. And with such information, then we, if we notice that at a certain point, if that's where the risk is coming, and so we talk about risk management, mm -hmm. then it means that is where we look and that is where we home in and we want to know the reasons why that type of fraud is going on. Because it doesn't even make sense. If you're talking about formalin, it's very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. For you to have enough to be able to say you are applying it, while, while there are local methods where people could uh, easily salt fish and then dry them in a hygienic manner, mm -hmm. why would somebody resort to that? But you may come across such things, but we'll say that it's not widespread because the last work we did on it, it was not like that. Only one person you identified. It, it was, yes. And it was, it, yeah, just uh, for one market, that was somewhere at Abraka. And what happened but to that person? That, no, uh, so, well, we dealt with that person. We dealt with that person over that because we wanted to know where the supply was coming from. But it was kind of a dead end, as, as it is. But what is, the danger in, what is the danger in consuming fish that has been preserved with formalin? Yes, formalin is meant to preserve. It's, a, it's not uh, something that you are supposed to take in. Mm -hmm. So if some gets into your body, depending on the quantity, then you may have a kind of reaction. It could be toxic depending on the amount. But right now, as it is, it, it's something that is not widespread. Mm -hmm. And just, what you, it's a whole chemistry that you can come across. So even the issue that um, our friend raised, right. the issue of monosodium glutamate, it, it's allowed. But then watch the quantity. Mm -hmm. It is just like sodium salt, sodium chloride. Mm -hmm. The sodium really, it is something that can be implicated in coronary problems with, with the heart, mm. that you want to be careful. That is why doctors would advise that try and bring your salt levels down. Mm -hmm. They are very, very I mean, important for us uh, you know, to, to look at. So food additives is a whole area. It is you who decide how much you are going you to add. To exactly. Mm -hmm. But there are those that are permissible. In fact, even recently, there, something went on social media talking about... Um, Sodium, was it uh, bicarbonate? Yeah. And, and, and the sodium ash also. And they are all uh, used. He talked about saltpeter. Can, can people traditionally have been using it, um, you know, with beans? Mm -hmm. um, and some, then we've had the MSG put in, um, what do you call it, um, uh, uh, kinky. 
But this is the important thing. It is the right of the consumer to know what is there. So the soup you are talking about... But they don't somebody, advertise the things that they put into the... Into no, no, the that's why I was asking, did you enjoy it? <laughs> because if you take... A, if you, I remember when we were in school, a lot of the soup that was being done for us those days, there was a little, a little bit of flour. Mm -hmm. It's a woman and then how... No, is able to, uh, mm -hmm. or inside, no, how they... They don't see anything wrong with that. Uh, no, no, if the person is putting flour in soup, and it's declaring it. It is when you don't declare it or you know that this is not how it's supposed to be done, then it means that deception is coming in. Right. You know, so it depends on the situation and how you look about traditionally you and I know that soup is soup. If I go and buy my granite soup and I'm, uh, I'm with my fufu and I'm eating, I'm expecting that. I'm not expecting you to add something else. If you do anything like that, then that is trickery, that is deception, mm -hmm. and that is not right. It may not be something that probably would kill you, you know, but you want to make sure that you are uh, transparent with the people that you deal with. So when we talk about food safety, adulteration, basically it is not allowed in our law. If you go to our law, adulteration is not allowed. So somebody is, I mean, uh, you grind pepper, then they are adding uh, uh, this in uh, pear. Exactly, we've, yes. we've heard of that one. That too. is illegal, that is wrong. You are trying to sell me, or sometimes even the chaff, mm -hmm. the chaff, um, from um, maize and the rest, they may try to add so that they get more of bulk. All those are deceptive practices, and the law forbids these things. Some of them, yes, it may not harm you, harm you but you are buying an inferior product, product as it is. And we would want to sound a word of caution to uh, the market, to people out there, that you need to deal straight with people. These practices are not allowed. And if the hands of the authority or uh, the municipal um, authorities uh, we, we get you, we will deal with you as um, the law um, allows us to. Uh, Louis, uh, let me ask your final question as I begin to wrap up with Mr. Ajay in the studio. So w w will you advise that I hold my chest high and eat comfortably outside of my home, knowing very well that I'm eating very wholesome food here in Ghana? Uh, to be honest, I would advise you any food that you eat must come from home. You must, you must prepare your food at home and then eat it at home. You in know the, you are the, safe. In you the know, event but... that you are unable to do that and the only resort is to buy from outside. Then you should be very careful. Extremely careful with the food you eat out. Okay. Uh, so uh, perhaps I can pick your last words as we wrap up this discussion. Yes, uh, I think since my, my father or my brother has actually talked about it, I think uh, let's let's see, so far I've not seen any of your guys in town. But then I will, I will advise that uh, the, the education must be more, education must be more. We should see the guys on the street. They should print a t-shirt for them, for them to be on each and every corner of this country. At least they should take it by region by region, so that people will get to know what is happening. And then when you go, they should be able to educate the people the safety of the food that you want to the, the, the food that you cook and what is good and what is not good, so that at least the people know about it. Because when you come to the hospital, there is a lot which is going on. When you are out there, you wouldn't know what is going on at the various hospital. Well, again, the network, but Louis, you, you've made your point. Louis Akwete is a traveler and he is more into food safety. So, uh, Mr. Jed, as we begin to wrap up, yes. uh, he raised issues about not seeing a lot of your people out there. And I'm saying that it will be simply impossible to, to monitor every food joint. Then, therefore, you need millions of workers yeah. to do that. But in the, in, in the, in the, you've, you explained how you are collaborating with other sister organizations to enforce the laws around it. How is it going? Yeah, um, so far, so good. Still more room for improvement. Mm -hmm. Because um, sometimes it's an area of uh, maybe somebody thinking you are t taking over his or her mm -hmm. territory as it is. But I think the buy-in is coming on more and more, and it's improving day by day. Mm -hmm. um, the, the collaboration is such that we have really broken down so many of the barriers. Right. And that is why you have, like the FAO, you have USAID in the form of, we say, GTI, Ghana Trade Investment, mm -hmm. assisting the Food and Drugs Authority. You have the Ministry of Health, our mother institution, also backing what we are doing. We, have, we are working with local government. We are working with Ghana Standards mm -hmm. Authority. So it's a widespread uh, you know, of government agencies that are working together. 
and in the end to have information that will be out there, um, the way things leave the shores of the country, the way things come in for us to be able to do surveillance. If you will permit me, no, I, I would want to also, um, the way Luis ended, mm -hmm. when he said, be careful, Right. we'd also want to say the same way. I was going to ask go, you whether go, I, should, go, I should be comfortably eating outside. Yes, but you, there, there's a responsibility. Choose where you eat. If you see something that is, is, is on toward, please inform the nearest FD office. And we are saying this also to the regions, that they also do the same thing. But at least check what you are eating. Uh, please, and when you also go buy food, sometimes, you see, you cannot blame only that street vendor. It's not like I'm defending Perhaps, them. perhaps you, where you may have procured the food for. Yeah, where you bought the food, may, everything, may, everything may be okay. But you bought the salad, you added the salad. It was you who went round three hours, four hours, you have not gotten home. Have you forgotten that yeah. one? So if something happens to that salad, is it the person who caused the problem? So let's always not be pointing the, the, the hands. We must know and be aware of how to handle food. Food must be kept at the right temperature. And that's why even FDA, you know, just recently, we, you know, we are working with Bolt, we are working with those who convey food. We right. are working with Ghana the parcels. Delivery guys. Yeah, delivery guys. Through Ghana parcels and Korea, we are signing an MOU with them because it's of concern. A lot of us, as we even sit in the studio now, I'm sure you may have ordered food. Mm. Do you know how long it has stayed on the, on, on, on the road? Before getting to you. Before getting to you. All of these things, are, there are protocols that we must observe. And so food safety is everybody's business. Mm. Let's all put our hands on the deck. FDA is there to support. We are working for your safety. My final question before you take leave of us. Uh, yesterday you had the Supreme Court fi bring finality to this. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I said praise the Lord. And I want to thank the Supreme Court I mean, uh, for what they have done. And we want to take this opportunity to let people know and in the law, it, it says that well-known people, mm -hmm. it's not that we have put our eyes on celebrities. Mm -hmm. In fact, we would rather that they should join us in what we are doing so that we'll be able um, to save um, our children. It's a national responsibility that you know, we are undertaking. And we want them to know that it is not that we have our eyes only on, like, on them. Mm -hmm. If you go to the breastfeeding promotion regulation, that in, in itself is talking about doing exclusive breastfeeding. Probably six months. For, for six months. So we say that the companies that sell infant formula, we don't allow them to do um, ad advertisement. Have you seen any advert no. of an infant formula no. on this thing? No. So should they also say they are taking us to court? Because the allies, so whatever is happening, Dr. Dilizaku, our chief executive, is working by the book. Mm -hmm. and, and we are grateful for what um, the courts have done. We are not saying that um, the, they should feel peeved off. Um, that is... Um, the, 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 those who the, describe themselves. Yes, but rather, them. they should join hands with us uh, so that we'll be able to work together and then make sure that alcohol doesn't bring us down. Alcohol is a very powerful mm -hmm. chemical. You may take it for recreational purposes, mm. but it also has its other side. But again, you, you, you forward, to, there's a law which says that media houses cannot advertise alcoholic products before exactly. 8 p.m. So you, so you, so you do, should also be pointing your, exactly. fing, your, your, your exactly. fingers you at You only do so after 8 p.m. Yes. But here again, I'm watching a satellite television, oh. and I'm subscribing to it. I'm watching at, at midday in the morning. Yes. And I see... Alcoholic food and, has been advertised and, 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 on these and those satellite are the, Those are, you know, the issues. We are living in a technological world. Right. D different things come up from time to time. We, for example, we're not envisaging the issue about people t t transporting, taking food around. But the way we are living our lives now, it has brought it in. So this is also a bridge that we have reached. We will need to cross it. We have had some discussions. They, there's even been some Ghanaians who have even had their products advertised of outside. Of course, and we see it yes. on this satellite exactly. television I'm watching. Exactly. And, and then we are, so we are going, for, was one case that we had. We asked that person that the person was, uh, the person's company is here in Ghana and it falls under the purview of the Food and Drugs Authority. And by law, we don't accept it. So wherever that advert is coming from, they need to go after it or take the other. The Food and Drugs Authority will take, take them on. So anybody who is also having that kind of thing that you think you go and do it outside and then it, you cross uh, the boundary and then beam it into, into Ghana, please, you need to think again. Mm -hmm. Because Dr. Lizidako is really firm on the ground and we want to make sure that what we are doing, we are having a fair playing field for everybody. Thank you so much. And that is uh, Mr. Roderick Dadia, Deputy Chief Executive Officer 
of the Food and Drugs Authority. Now, there's a water warning. I want to give it to you before I take a short break. Now, according to the Ghana Meteor Agency, a weak to moderate rainstorm observed over the Gulf of Guinea is expected to propagate northwards to affect the coastal and inland areas, inducing cloudiness whilst producing thunderstorm with or without rain of varying intensity. And the thunderstorm are likely to be accompanied by weak to moderate winds. And uh, if you are in the greater Accra, so these are the, the areas to take action, the red, uh, be prepared, be aware, low risks, those are the colors that they have put in them. So if you look at places like where we should take action, so Aflauho, Akachi, Adidome, uh, Sogakope, you should be aware, Asisiwa, Bego, Kufu, the other, so Ajin, Kotoku, Oyarifa, Taifa, Techi, Accra, Adan, Takwari, immediate environs, you should be aware that there could be rains. And of course, it goes on, on, and on, and on. This is a pause here on Joyce. We'll take a short break. When we return, we'll look at other areas that are of interest to you this Thursday afternoon. Stay right there. Right, welcome back to the pause here on Joy News. Now, the Supreme Court of Ghana will tomorrow give details about its decision to uphold the Food and Drugs Authority ban on celebrity endorsement of alcohol, alcohol advertisement. The ruling, which was delivered on Tuesday, is seen as a major triumph for public health over commercial interests, with civil society actors praising the decision. We heard a man I spoke to some few minutes ago, the deputy CEO of F FDA, talk about it. But how much of an impact will this make in a country's quest to reduce death caused by non communicable diseases? We'll be speaking to the national coordinator for the Ghana NCD uh, shortly. First of all, let me bring you details of a report released by the Birth and Death Registry on the conditions killing us the most in Ghana. And so uh, that's what you have on your screens now. So hypertension is still leading, uh, 2,573 deaths. Uh, that's hypertension, cardiovascular diseases. Now pneumonia comes second, heart failure uh, third, uh, acute respiratory failure, uh, stroke, it goes all the way to diabetes, severe sepsis, septic shock, chronic liver disease, cancer, and of course, uh, cerebrovascular diseases. Uh, these are some of the uh, diseases killing uh, Ghanaians. Top on their list, of course, is hypertension. So this is, uh, this is uh, a distribution of 11 causes of death since 2022. So let me bring in Labram Musa, who is the national coordinator, Ghana NCD, that's Non-Communicable Disease Alliance, and the executive director of the program's Vision for Alternative Development Ghana. Uh, sir, you're welcome to the post. Thank you very much for having me. So the Supreme Court ruled that known personalities can no longer advertise for or advertise alcoholic products on national uh, television. I've also looked at the, the, the 11 causes of deaths in Ghana, uh, you know, according to the Birth and Death Registry. How severe is alcohol in all of these? Yes, thank you very much. And I'm greeting to your viewers and then also listeners. Indeed, um, in fact, yesterday, um, the public health community and uh, civil society actors, um, both in Ghana and across the globe, were elated and were, were, were very much happy about the verdict that was actually, I mean, given yesterday by the, by the Supreme Court, indeed. Uh, it brings some form of finality to the fact that uh, we need to protect public health from commercial interests of few individuals. And um, as um, FDA spoke, so I will not belabor the point of it, but more importantly, as you, you know, projected the, on the screen, mm. you could see that they call it um, the disease burden as far as um, chronic non-communicable diseases is very alarming in the country. Mm. And um, the country is bearing the brunt of profit, both the individuals, um, the I mean, families and the country as a whole. Mm. You know, recently we had um, at the Kofonati City Hospital, when the Rena Center was closed, it was closed because of the, the extent to which people are amassing to the place to seek for care. Mm. And the fact that the facility uh, probably is unable to, you know, to accommodate this number of persons. Your government is investing so much money 
to care for people with chronic conditions, the cancers, the, the, the diabetes, you know, the hypertension, the stroke, and then also cardiovascular disease, heart diseases. And all of these diseases I've mentioned, as you have projected, most of them are as a result of, you know, consumption of health-harming products or health-harming commodities, which tobacco, which alcohol is a major contributing factor. So the point for us is uh, mm. we, are, we are very much grateful and that we are hoping that there will be more interventions that the government will roll out through the Food and Drugs Authority so that we are able to reduce the carnage and the, the extent to which people are exposed to these alcoholic beverages. Um, I kept on saying that uh, this is not a measure to stop somebody from his income, but of course to protect public health and safety. And the primary objective, as we have advocated, and then you know, work with the Food and Health Authority, the Ministry of Health, to ensure that uh, we are able to, you know, protect children and young coming generation mm. from being exposed to these, you know, health harming products. So that is the reason why we felt that uh, we need to, you know, come out with a statement and fully support the Food and Health Authority in all of this. Right. Let me let, let me also mention the fact that uh, indeed. WHO recently, and also the Lancet, we all know the Lancet, um, uh, recently came out with a publication to indicate that uh, no amount of alcohol is safe for the human, you know, for the human being. Mm. Um, so we are uh, of the view that uh, we need to uh, propagate this and to ensure that call the whole public, including uh, our, our own celebrities and well-known personalities, to understand the fact that that uh, it is our collective responsibility to protect our children who research have indicated that even at the age of um, 21 to 25 years, the human brain is still developing. So if the human brain, the human mind is still developing even at the age of 21 to 25, it means that the children at the age of, you know, from the teen age, I mean, to adulthood do not need to be exposed to alcohol in any form. Right, right. So, 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 let, 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 let me come in here. I mean, yesterday after the Supreme Court ruling, the reaction that came forth, especially from uh, the, some of the known personalities, was to the effect that, I mean, the kind of drinks or alcoholic beverages that people are taking, and the kind of mixtures that they, 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 they are taking, uh, in these are not, you know, things you see on television. These are not things you see advertised. So, I mean, the, the, the reaction was that the people we are targeting, some of them have mind of their own. The experiments they are undertaking have nothing to do with what we advertise on television or on radio. So the fight must really be, 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 be taken seriously if we are to succeed. Well, I mean, yeah, you, are, you are not absolutely right. Um, let me say that because we have the informal sector in every aspect of, you know, of our, our endeavor. We have the informal sector and the formal sector. And indeed, even in Ghana, the Ministry of Health, the public, uh, the national policy on, on, on alcohol has clearly indicated that the fight is a big one. Uh, we need to start somewhere. And the, we have to go for low-hanging fruits. And then eventually we will see how we can deal with, with the other ones. In every country, you have people who brew alcoholic beverages in their homes. We have people who brew, who brew alcoholic beverages even in schools or at the universities. The point for us is what goes viral and goes, you know, goes to affect everyone is what probably now we, we, we can lay our hands on. And you know what advertisement can do mm. you know, to, to young people and even as adults. You know, the issue of choices can easily be, you know, be easily be, you know, affected by, by advertisement. So, yes, there are many interventions I mentioned earlier. Last year, we were all in this country when Parliament passed the Excise Duty Amendment Act, mm. increasing taxes on, uh, on alcoholic beverages, tobacco, and also sugar sweetened beverages. This is a good intervention, and the target, obviously, is for young, young children, young, young adults, or young people, as well as you know, um, the poor and the vulnerable who are unable to, you know, to fend for themselves. And even when they contract the disease, they are unable to, you know, to, you know, to go through the continuum of care. So the interventions are many. We are also rolling out a lot of public awareness creation. So yes, uh, trust me, um, this is one of the interventions. And you also know that um, 
there's currently a restriction on how they call on advertisement, even on on how they call on on TV. Yeah, till after from 8 p.m. Yeah, from from 6 p.m. from 6 a.m. to 8 8 p.m. You cannot advertise alcoholic beverages, and this is also helping to reduce the extent to which our children are exposed to alcoholic beverages. I was telling um, um, Valentin and his colleagues at the court yesterday that, you know, as I speak to them yesterday, my children, you know, when they close from school and your children, they will virtually will be in the house. Mothers are working. Everyone is working. Fathers are working. So who do we leave our children to? To the mercy of the society, to the mercy of the screen, especially for the, I mean, the, the, the middle income. Most of our children are, are, are left at the mercy of the screen, the TV in the house and then also social media stuff so why don't you protect the easy one that our children come closer to the point for us is alcohol is not banned in the country mm. if you want to take in alcohol no problem get your drinking bar go and but we don't want a situation where we are forced we, alcohol is being forced on our throats alcohol is being forced on us on daily basis and this is what we are talking about if you are able to do this Prevention is the most important thing that you know we can we can live for. I mean for, I mean for for generation of today and generation to come. And this in the next few years, we reduce our disease burden to a large extent. We are told that uh, ninety four thousand four hundred people die from non communicable diseases every year, mm. and for the leading cause of death in the world today. But nobody speaks about it. The diabetes, cancers are overtaking. I mean, I mean the, all of us. Everyone who dies today is as a result of heart failure, diabetes, cancers. Everybody is struggling with this disease. Right. And majority of these things are caused by, you know, by these um, products. So let us see how we can reduce, I mean, this burden. So we are calling on our celebrities to come and join us to reduce the, this extent. Let's go to their schools. Let's do public awareness creation because the followers of these celebrities, the Shatawalis, the, 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 the Wendy Shees, the Sarkodiers, Look at the followers. Most of them are teaming youth. And you know what? What do the youth do when when, when the adults do something? They okay. embed their, their All right. I guess I guess it's a fight How that. Much they uh, them? Well, I, I guess it's a fight or it's it's a project that the entire nation must must rally behind. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Labram Musa, National Coordinator, Ghana uh, Non Communicable Diseases Alliance, uh, speaking to us about the Supreme Court ruling that now bars known personalities from advertising alcoholic products on our national televisions. Folks, that's our show for today. That's our show for today. For more stories, log on to our website, myjoyonline.com. And of course, uh, on Top Story, on Newsnight, on Joy News Prime, we have the latest from the court of the cross, as a cross examination of uh, Richard Jack the third accused in the ambulance trial comes to a close. We will tell you the reaction of the Attorney General's Department and lawyers for Richard Jack when you stay tuned to Top Story Newsnight and Joy News Prime here on Joy News. Tomorrow will be Friday, and we'll take it easy here on the pod. But whatever you are up to in the hours ahead, I do hope it's profitable. My name is Elton Bobby, as usual. Thanks for your company. Take care, and have a good evening.